I'm Teddy Abrams, and I'm the music director of the Louisville Orchestra. I have a background uh, as a pianist and a clarinetist, and uh, decided very early on that that I wanted to not only do that, but also be a conductor. Uh, I started playing piano when I was, I guess, around three or four, and clarinet when I was eight, and fell in love with the clarinet immediately. Um, I just I, I had no idea that it was going to be something that was that important to me, uh, and. As soon as I started playing it, it was it was just kind of like magic, and I think my parents recognized pretty pretty early on that that I, I was really devoted to it. That there was something kind of special there uh, with with how I liked to play the, the the clarinet just constantly and, and practiced on my own. and And I didn't have much of a of a musical background. My parents are are they are not musicians, and and I, they decided, well, maybe he should go see an orchestra concert, and and I I did. I went to one when I was nine years old. It was the first time I ever saw an orchestra play, uh, and it was a free outdoor concert in San Francisco. Uh, and I'll never forget. As soon as I saw that concert start, I immediately was was captivated with everything that was happening, and I decided right then and there that very day that I was going to be a conductor. That was my uh, decision, and. Uh, I mean, that I'm sure at the time I would would not have expected that that would have actually worked out that way. Uh, but I felt really strongly about it. It was it was not it was not just like a casual thing where I thought, oh, that would be a, a nice thing to do. That looks cool. It was it was like I felt that that was what I needed to do. Uh, and I was very fortunate. This was in San Francisco where I grew up. That I, I ended up writing a letter a couple of days later to the music director there in the San Francisco Symphony, uh, Michael Tolson Thomas. And I asked for conducting lessons, went on and on. It was kind of a crazy letter. Uh, and in fact, a, a short uh, while later, he wrote me back, and he eventually did become uh, my teacher. And uh, I started working with him when I was about 12 years old. Uh, you know, he, he became kind of a musical mentor. Uh, and then eventually, um, I became his assistant conductor at the New World Symphony after I graduated from, from college. So uh, there, there was a really remarkable uh, trajectory, and, and, and also just, a, a I think, a a really beautiful uh, display of, of generosity, and that act right there that, that this one of the great living conductors took the time to write to a nine year old and and gave me the inspiration that I needed to to find a path for myself. Yeah, I've never forgotten that, and and that is you know that that that's kind of um, a representation of what an orchestra can do at its very best. A musician, obviously, that's a very specific example, but it's it's a representation of what we can do. How we we really do touch uh, uh, people's lives and their their existence and 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 connect things for them that I don't think anything else can. And so that that's been my kind of guiding principle and 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 you know in, inspiring uh, uh, kind of uh, sense of mission since since the beginning. Are you finding now that as a music director of Louisville Orchestra that you're uh, getting letters from youngsters or perhaps taking younger people under your wing and, and uh, pointing them towards classical music? Yes, and, and one of the, the things that we focused on here and made a tremendous priority is our education and community engagement department. And, and every arts institution has one of these pretty much in, in the 21st century. Every orchestra does. But one thing that I noticed is that not a lot of the musical leaders, in other words, not a lot of the conductors get involved in this stuff. They may you know do a cameo here or conduct a special youth orchestra concert there. But for me, this is this is an everyday kind of mission. This is not an occasional thing. You, if you have the opportunity to change people and to uh, to give them access to some kind of spectacular uh, musical experience and to and, and to alter you, 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 a kid's potential relationship with this art form. Then you have to take that every every time that you can possibly make it make it happen, and it's become almost a you know a devotional kind of a situation for for me here. But it has uh, it has proven a very effective tool, not only you know for the altruistic reasons, but because it, it changes the way people perceive the orchestra. Right. People see the orchestra then not as an institution that they have to go to, but one that comes to them and one that cares for them. And I think that's been one of the, the, the big challenges for the entire orchestral community is, is changing that mindset that, oh, the, the orchestra is some kind of musical museum that you have to go to. Uh, that, that is, you know, it's not bringing us in. We have to, to, to you know, prepare our, our minds and our, our you know, uh, souls for it. 
And I, my whole philosophy is the exact opposite, that the orchestra takes care of its people. You know, we we serve the people as, as an institution. Um, and so uh, it sounds very kind of just, you know, like a political philosophy, but, but that's what we're here to do. That's the point of being a, a large, very difficult to run and fundraise for nonprofit. That's what that's part of the mission. Yeah. Well, uh, another part of the mission, I assume, is reaching the audience that you already have and expanding that audience, not just among young people, but but among people who are, might even have any inclination to, to listen to live music. And I think that brings us to the album All In, because there's a, a wide variety of musical styles represented, especially in your piece that I want to talk about a little bit. But first, can you tell us about uh, the album overall? I mean, the title All In has certain implications to it. Can you talk about that for us? Well, the, the album title actually came from a meeting when when the uh, the president of the of the the album group, which is it's Decca Gold, uh, which is part of Universal Music and, and Universal Classics, uh, came to Louisville, and I, it was a kind of a situation where. Uh, we had been talking with with Universal for a while about this this album, and when when people tell you that oh the you know the Louisville orchestra orchestra is trying to do something really different and really trying to change uh, the the model and experiment and do risky things and create a lot of new music and and you know do do genre bending things, people sometimes can look at you a little skeptically, especially on the coasts. And our philosophy has always been bring them here, let them see it, because we really think something special is is happening at this this orchestra. And so once people kind of get here uh, and and can see for themselves. What it, what it's like? Um, they they usually go, oh wow, that that really is quite quite interesting, or really different, or what, you know, that something something is happening there. Uh, and it was in that very situation we were all uh, uh, kind of meeting after he'd just come to Louisville, and we were all uh, throwing around uh, ideas for the album title. I think it was our one of, one of the um, the deputy mayors that that was was at that table too, and said, "Well, you know, you guys really have been all in since since uh, since you've got the, gotten there." What about that for a title? And just yeah. kind of clicked, and and I think that it just kind of represents this idea that you know if you're an artist, you you have to be all in. I mean, I know it se- seems like a little tagline, but it's it's true that you cannot half do this. You know, an orchestra can't be kind of half in, half out of the water here. Uh, you know, this is this is what you've chosen to do. It's a vocation and a calling. So uh, the only way to make it successful is is to be quote unquote all in and. and so it's just as much as a, 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 of a description as it is an a- aspiration. Uh, and the album is all American music because the, our, our identity as an orchestra in Louisville, Kentucky, in the 21st century is as an American orchestra. We, so we see ourselves, you know, certainly uh, representing what it means to be in, in this country, in this part of the country, even at this time, uh, but also as an institution that develops new work uh, and, and finds people that come to us they offer a new perspective on music. I mean that and that that's happened time and time again. I mean you look at you look at musical history and you see, you know, the way uh, I mean, everything from uh, Mozart would encounter kind of Turkish military music and incorporate that uh, all the way through Mahler hearing a klezmer band pass through uh, his town or, or uh, Copeland g- being inspired by Benny Goodman. I mean, this is yeah. this is something that, that has generated so much music for centuries. And and I'm interested in, in continuing that that very mission so that the album reflects all those different elements being American, uh, finding cr- creative, unusual people who offer new perspective and creating new music. Music. I like how you bring it back to the uh, clarinet. <laughs> They're a little bit ah uh, yes yeah yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> you have the, the Copeland clarinet concerto on here, but um, also your piece unified field, sort of like all in is uh, a, a poker term. Unified field makes me think of quantum physics or something like that. But I assume it refers to like all the different musical styles that you you have in this piece. You, exactly, you, you nailed it. That that that's right. It is. It's the tongue in cheek reference to the uh, to the scientific elements. I mean, it has it has nothing to do with science whatsoever. But it does have to do with this concept that music can sound very very different on the surface. Uh, in other words, Eastern European folk music sounds very different on the surface from jazz or Renaissance polyphony. But in reality, the musical language that makes all those things work is is unified it's a global language it's a human language and that's what i'm trying to uh, kind of explore here uh you'll see how many styles i can reference in one composition and still be honest and and make it cohesive as a real piece of music 
Yeah, well, I think you really succeeded with that, especially the way that it sets the tone at the beginning and then everything else that is uh, a divergence from there still has a a connection to the beginning. So I I really like the way that you've uh, put it together. Well, thank you so much. I I really appreciate that. Yeah. And you have Storm Large on this disc. Now, she's a favorite here in Toledo. She's been here a few times, I think coming back this season as well. Uh, Tell us a little bit about your, your work with her. Oh, well, Storm is uh, somebody who I actually first encountered when I was the assistant conductor in the Detroit Symphony, Uh, and I loved everything about Storm and her her personality, her openness, her just, she has one of the great adventurous spirits, I think, of any artist I've worked with, and I just knew that that was a person that the people in Louisville would love. I brought her here in my first season, and she performed the the Kurt Vile Seven Deadly Sins, and people in Louisville loved her. And she and I started playing cabaret shows. It would just be me on the on the piano, and I've never been so. Uh, I've never been in a situation where I found it hard to play my part because either I was laughing so hard or so shocked by everything that was happening. Because she is, <laughs> she just has, <laughs> if you haven't seen her, you've got to see her. It's so amazing how she captivates everybody. But she'll take you to this really far out place and you'll think, oh my God, they're not going to, they're not, you know, they're not going to, and then you see them and everybody loves it. And uh, yeah. I just thought that that, she represented so much about what, what a, a musician and a performer can do that that we really feel is is also what we want to explore, and that's that's the kind of connection I was talking about earlier. Yeah, Teddy Abrams, the music director of Louisville Orchestra, the album is all in. Congratulations on that, and thanks for joining us here on FM ninety one. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it.